，您的直觉，我们的软体。感谢您观看齐全企业有限公司科学应用软体研讨会影片。在本次研讨会中 ，Mariana 将重点放在视觉化质性内容分析方法的发展。以及他如何在这个主题应用 MaxQDA 直性级混合研究方法应用软体，这是他博士论文的一部分。在该专案中，他探索了和平与暴力论述中的可见性政治、关注性别、性取向和殖民性的作用。为此，该计划以妇女和平与安全 （WPS） 一成为框架，这是联合国安理会制定的规范。旨在将性平观点纳入国际和平与安全的主流。So good afternoon, everyone, and many many thanks for giving me the space to participate in the MaxQDA research session. I'm really happy to present here, and I look forward、um, to hearing people's feedback. So my name is Mariana. I'm a PhD student at Ulster University. Uh, which is based in Belfast. I'm originally from Barcelona, as you might guess, for my accent. And in this session, I will present how I am using MaxQDA in my doctoral project, presenting the method visual visual qualitative content analysis. So my PhD project tentative title is "Seeing Peace and Violence: Visual Representations of Gender, Sexuality, and Coloniality in the Women, Peace, and Security Agenda." In this project,、um, what I do is exploring、uh, the politics of visibility and invisibility in visual narratives of peace and violence, and I do pay attention to the role of gender and sexuality and coloniality. So, what I understand is that these visual representations have an impact on international practices,、uh, particularly those actions carried by the United Nations, and more broadly on global politics. So, as I will explain later, I use、uh, visual methods to explore the data. Okay,、um, I structure the presentation as follow. I will try to go very quickly and present the project context, which is the Women, Peace, and Security Agenda. Then I will briefly explain visual methods, the data I'm exploring, and then I will go through how am I using MaxQDA, and then reflect a bit about the advantages of using MaxQDA. The challenges I'm facing, let's say, and the potential of AI, and yeah, finally we will go to the Q and A part. So going now to the context, the context I'm exploring is the Women, Peace, and Security Agenda.、Um, this is an agenda aimed to mainstream gender in international peace and security. The agenda was born in the United、uh, Nations Security Council with Resolution 1325 in the year 2000. So、um, this resolution has been seen as a feminist success, as it was recognizing women、um, not only as victims of armed conflict with particular needs, but also as participants in peace building. So the agenda has been moving forward、um, during the last two decades with the approval of nine resolutions more. Um, which you can be, I don't know if you can see my pointer,、um, but you can see these resolutions on the slide presented chronologically.、Um, each resolution is adding on、uh, substantial issues to this very first resolution. So notably, the second resolution, which is 1820 from 2008,、um, puts emphasis on the urgent need of addressing sexual violence in conflict. The approval of this second resolution is very important because it affected the Women, Peace, and Security Agenda Pact. As you can see on the slide, half of the resolutions, those that are in green,、um, are focusing on participation, and the other half, which are those in red, are focusing on violence and more concretely on sexual violence in conflict. So after more than two decades of ongoing work, the Women, Peace, and Security Agenda got some criticism from different angles.、Um, I focus on the critique that Pratt、uh, did. Pratt is a key author who analyzes the agenda from a feminist and postcolonial perspective. She takes、uh, Spivak, which is another author, description of colonial relations. You can see that on the left of the slide. Uh, Spivak reads these colonial dynamics as white men saving brown women from the brown men, and Pratt observes a twist or a shift 
in the agenda, saying that it also has some brown women working as auxiliaries in uh, the international community. So to explore the data I use for my project, I use visual methods. Uh, this can be understood as empirical approaches to both the creation and the analysis of images. In my case, I'm doing the second as I'm exploring the photographs from the Women Autism Security Agenda related documents. Um, the, it's important to say that the agenda are not only these resolutions, but there are also implementation strategies done by key actors. This uh, can be the United Nations, United Nations member states and civil society organizations. And those documents with visuals can include from annual reports to national action plans, guidelines, manifestos, and even posters. So my research question of the project started, um, I started asking who is visible and creating a particular narrative or vision of peace and violence and who is invisible or displaced. Uh, when I started looking at the visuals, then I took as a guideline uh, five clue, uh, three questions to do to media outputs. These three questions are how is the world represented? Then what identities are set up for those involved in the program or story? In that case, uh, which identities can we identify in these narratives or visions of peace and violence in the agenda? And as a third question, what relationship are set, set up between those involved? So here I um, present the data I'm looking at. Mentioned that in the exploratory phase, uh, during the data collection, I identified like more than 2050 reports um, with more than 1,500 images from the UN, member states, and also international civil society organizations. So I decided to focus on the UN Secretary Annual Reports on Sexual Violence. Uh, for its relevance on the implementation of the agenda, and also because it gives me a more manageable number of images to start exploring. So as I'm presenting on the slide, I'm looking at eight annual reports that have been accompanied with images. Uh, this gives me a total of 242 photographs. And the first annual report, uh, the one of 2016, has 25 images, and the latest has 51. So now moving on how I'm using MaxQDA. So the method I'm applying is visual qualitative content analysis. And the main reference to do this method is the book Qualitative Content Analysis of Kugart and Radiker. Apologies because I know it's German surnames and I might be mispronouncing it. Um, so the goal is um, or why I'm using this method is because a key part of the method is the hermeneutics or the art of interpretation. Um, so this interpretation in my case is guided by the feminist and post-colonial theory, while also some queer theory inside. So the analysis is done following two typologies of content analysis. On the one hand, uh, structuring qualitative content analysis, and on the other side, building qualitative content analysis. So now I will try to go quickly um, through the different phases, starting with the structuring qualitative content analysis. Um, Mention that um, by what I started is downloading all the annual reports, and then I took screenshots of the photographs that appear in the annual reports. These were organized on folders, ordered chronologically, and then these folders of images were imported into MaxQDA. Um, Say also that in this moment, I also started a Word document where I was writing the step-by-step -step and also a journal. Um, and also say that the next step was to create uh, variables with all the metadata. This means that I was um, recording the year of the annual report and also in which, which section of the report were the images. This is important because there are some pages of the reports that are dedicated to country, like our country specific. Um, to do that, what I was doing is sending the document variables into an Excel document um, and then importing the data back to MaxQDA. Um, then the third, third step on the slide uh, was to 
um, organize the images in an Excel document and then describe each image. And then I identify the duplicated images as some images were um, presented in different reports uh, in a different year. But for instance, in one report, the image was in black and white. So as fourth step on the right of the slide, uh, what I did is I created through MaxQDA uh, a words cloud. Um, so this gave me a preliminary idea of the words frequency and the concepts I was using to describe the images. I think this was an important step because at the end, the coded segments of the images um, will be like interpreted and translated and will go from visual into text. And finally, what I did, uh, the last step was to add memos next to all the duplicated images so I could quickly identify it. Um, the second phase was to develop the main category. Um, these main categories come the, from the key concepts that I worked during the like during my work on the theoretical framework chapter, the literature review on the Women, Peace and Security agenda, and also in the methodological chapter where I was working more on visibility and visuality. You can see these keywords on the left of the screen. These are violence, peace, power, but in this case, power is using to theorize, so it's not transformed um, as a code. Gender, sexuality, and coloniality. So these keywords, as you can see now on the right of the slide, uh, were imported in MaxQDA or were recorded into MaxQDA as codes. So a brief step before I started coding was to create two different tables. This was done in Word. Um, one table, which is the one on the left, was the category table. And in this table, I was putting the, like describing uh, the category and then I did another table, which was for the subcategories. In that case, the codes that I would apply to the images. Um, then I started coding. This, I said, it was a uh, deductive-inductive process. Um, mentioned that MaxQDA, as you can see on the left of the slide, uh, allows to code the images by framing it, so you can draw this kind of squares around the different parts of the image. Um, and then what I did is follow three different steps with each main category. The first step was to um, code the main category subcodes from the literature. So for example, from sexuality main category, I had the code women as mothers. Um, this was a deductive category uh, code, let's say. Um, then while doing this round of coding, I was uh, making comments. So I created from these comments inductive categories. And then I did a new round of coding. In the case of sexuality, I had the new codes as children on the one hand, then women. Um, and then I created the category family photo with the codes heteronormative family and portraits of the disappeared. And the third step was to write a paragraph analyzing the results and suggesting new codes and codes relations. Mention also a practical issue. Um, for the software for MaxQDA to make code relations, um, the coded segments need to be in contact. For instance, on the image you can see on the screen, the pink frame needs to be in contact with the yellow frame, which would be for children. Then the program will understand that these two, these two codes are related. Um, here, just putting as an example how I was filling the table of the subcategories or the codes. Um, this I was doing it while coding, and I was um, describing how I was applying the category. And then I was also putting some examples of the application. So the fourth phase of the structuring qualitative content analysis was to do a very first analysis. Um, here I was using the paragraphs I wrote during the coding process, and then I started using different functions from MaxQDA, uh, such as the code uh, frequency, and then it's where I started doing some code uh, relations through the code relations browser. Um, this very first analysis allowed me to answer the question about what identities are set up in peace and violence narratives. 
So moving now to type building qualitative content analysis. Um, this is something is very work in progress as I started doing it now. Um, but well, the aim of type building is to build types. Um, and in that case, I'm using this method as a way to answer the question, what relationships are set up between those involved? Um, this is translated in my project as testing Brad twist on Spivak and asking that to the images. As mentioned, uh, Brad had this reading um, and saw this twist saying that white men are saving the brown women from the brown men, but also some brown women become auxiliaries. Um, so from these, I created different types that you can see on the bottom of the slide. So the second phase of type building is to define relevant dimensions and determine which are the attributes. In that case, what I did, and you can see on the left of the screen, is creating a table where I was typing which is the type and then which codes uh, could could be on this type. Um, you can see the different in the different codes list that there are these codes in orange. This, these are the new codes that come after the analysis of the structuring content analysis. Um, and then MaxKDA through the simple code patterns allows to do steps. So allows to find these different images that have the same characteristics. Um, I also used as a more explorative way uh, the occurrence of codes and variables, um, which is another function from MaxQDA. So type building has, uh, as a method, has nine phases. And as I mentioned, I like I started working with it. So I'm not going to stop here describing this step. But I would like to just briefly mention how I started like uh, working with the type victim. Um, in that case, uh, mentioned that like the software really allows me to go from the big bigger picture, which are those 242 images, to then reduce it to eight images that might fit in this type building and start analyzing it and like looking at it more in depth. Um, and I also need to start exploring, but I know that I will start connecting um, these photographs with literature. For example, on the right of the screen, you can see uh, two images from the work of Wendy Hesford. Um, one is, a, I think, well-known uh, photograph from the National Geographic, and another one is from an Amnesty International campaign. But I. I really think that the program will allow me to start uh, making these relations and, and finding these relations in a quickly way. Yeah, so now to wrap up a bit, um, talk about the advantages of using MaxQDA. Uh, before using the software, I was mostly working with Excel. Um, and then I feel that the program really allowed me to start doing a more systematic track systematic tracking of every like of the step by step with the data. Um, also this combination between images and textual data. Um, mention also that the code uh, color system that MaxQDI presents, I think it's really uh, useful. Um, not only for the moment I'm working with the images and analyzing it, but also in the future, like to start making diagrams and presenting the results. So quickly say that um, between or the differences between Excel and MaxQDA is that the so software is making it easy to code with the images and also um, to add comments and add memos. Uh, also, there are many tools to do analytics and based code relations. I did some of these code relations before using MaxQDA in a very manual way with my notebook and pencil. Um, yeah, and also some tools to prepare and present the results. Uh, also say that Excel, well, MaxQDA has compatibility with Excel. This was also very, very useful because there was some work I had, uh, for instance, the metadata of the images, like which part of the report were the images, which year. This was some work I had already done in Excel, and it was really quickly to transfer from Excel into MaxQDA. 
challenges, well, I think that MaxQDA has been mainly used to analyze text, so I can find a lot of um, tutorials very, very focused on text. Um, but then sometimes you can apply this to images. So um, then say that images with a lot of codes can be messy. This can be sorted by the displayed codes option. Uh, also, as I mentioned before, it is really important to check that all the selected segments are in contact to create relations. Um, and finally, I would say that the AI assistant is working for text, but I see potential to work with images. And that's why I made the wish list of the things I would love MaxKDA to maybe do in the future with IASDs. Um, on the yellow square, which is on the left of the screen, um, things that I think that would have been very useful for my work is to identify duplicated images. There are some softwares that do this. Um, though when I start, when, when I tried with um, the photos I had, um, it was really uh, difficult, as you can see, maybe, maybe it's very tiny, but there are some images that are, the duplication is the same, but then there are some images that the duplication is that it's the frame of the picture. Sometimes there is a filter on the image, so it can be a bit difficult to recognize it. Um, then another option that I think it would be interesting is this of the reverse image searcher, uh, which Google Lens does or Sine does which is finding this image um, on other, like how this image has been applied in different places um, and yeah, that Google can find. Um, and then in the orange square, um, I present like, yeah, more explorative options that can be done with AI. Uh, for example, the image description and um, that some AI softwares can do and also computer vision options. Computer vision is this field that identifies objects and subjects, for instance, through facial recognition. Um, and then this of um, AI images generator from textual description. I think that, for instance, the AI image description for me would be interesting uh, more to compare what is the artificial intelligence finding and the differences between the that description with my description let's say yeah so as a conclusion say that max QDA has been a really helpful or it's being a really helpful tool to do visual qualitative content analysis it really allows me to track every step and also um record the reflections um that are appearing on the way um through memos or comments um it's also a very useful tool to analyze the visual data. I think that it's like this system of framing the coded segments of the images has been really helpful for me. And it also um, can be useful as it has some tools to present results. I believe it will be also very useful to link images with text. Uh, this is more work in progress. At this point, I really wish my literature review was done with MaxKDA, but I think it's something I will have to start uh, doing now. Um, and also, yeah, I mentioned this AI as this potential that I, I can see. And maybe as a final note, say that in my case, at least, I really combined MaxQDA work with some manual uh, work with the data um, that then I was transferring to MaxQDA, but yeah, I kind of needed both. Um, yeah, so many, many thanks for your attention. And yeah, really looking forward uh, for the feedback and any comments. 您的直觉，我们的软体。买正版软体找齐全企业有限公司，同一编号二八七九三九六七，所有产品皆享咨询，支援及保固，并可开立二联式或三联式发票。Cheer Chain Enterprise distributes and sells software with the aim of offering clients guidance when choosing software as well as technical support. 